it's better to be prepared, it's better to be prepared for, an for an opportunity and not have one, one than to have an opportunity and not be prepared. You see, when you're not pursuing your goal, you are literally committing spiritual suicide. When you have some goal out here that you're stretching for and reaching for, that takes you out of your comfort zone, you'll find out some talents and abilities you have that you didn't know you have. I started speaking just to elementary school kids because I knew they didn't know what I was talking about. <laughs> and they gave me all kind of stand ovation. We like you, yeah, yeah. Then I graduated up to junior high school and then to senior high school and then to various community groups and church groups and civic associations and then to colleges and to businesses. Now I'm traveling across the country and then traveling nationally and internationally. But I never would have discovered what I'm able to do right now if I wasn't willing to take a chance. And you've got to be willing to do that. You've got to believe in yourself. A lot of people love me to tell this story. When I got out of school, you know, my first major goal was to buy my mother a home and my hero in broadcasting was Paul Harvey and I wanted to become involved in broadcasting and I love the disc jockeys that were on the air and I wanted to become a disc jockey. See, so I started working to develop my communication skills and expand my vocabulary. I started visualizing myself being a disc jockey. I saw myself on the air having a talk show and playing records and people listening to me. That was my vision. That was my dream. I held that in mind constantly and I would practice all the time. Practice makes what? Absolutely not. This, this just dislodge that from your mind. Practice only makes improvement. Perfection doesn't exist. You need to take it out of a dictionary. It doesn't, it doesn't exist. Practice only makes improvement. You can always better your best. You have not done your best work yet. As long as you're here, you have a chance to transcend yourself. So don't believe in perfection. It doesn't exist. It only makes improvement. So I would practice, practice, practice every day, every day, every day. And finally, I went over to this radio station, asked a guy for a job, and Mr. Bowdoin, and I said, how are you doing, sir? I'd like to get a job. I was working on Miami Beach at, at the Fountain Blue Hotel at the time. Jackie Gleason and the June Taylor dancers were famous. And my favorite program on television, most people would not remember, John Beresford Tipton. Hi, my name is Michael Anthony. I have a check for $1 million. How many of you remember that program, all right? The Millionaire, that was my favorite program on television, you know? So this was my fantasy, you know? And every time we would drive from Miami Beach, I would fantasize, oh, that's the house. When I get my million, I'm gonna buy my mother that home over there. So that was my fantasy. So I went up to Mr. Butterball, and he said, do you have any radio experience? I said, no, sir. Do you have any background in journalism? I said, no, sir. I said, but I can never get experience if you don't give me the opportunity. I've been practicing a lot, sir. He said, I'm sorry, we don't have any job for you. I said, thank you, sir. He didn't know my reasons for being there. My reason, I wanted to use radio as a means to earn the money to buy my mother home. I went back to the radio station again. I said, how you doing, Mr. Butterball? My name is Les Brown. I know your name. Didn't I just see you here yesterday? I said, yes, sir. I said, y'all have any jobs here? Didn't I tell you I said we didn't have a job? Yes, sir, but I thought maybe somebody got fired or resigned. I didn't know, sir. <laughs> I went the next day. How you doing, Mr. Butterball? He said, yes. And I just didn't take it personal. How you doing? So y'all have any jobs here? Didn't I just tell you yesterday and the day before we didn't have any work? I went the next day, showed up like nothing was wrong, like I saw him for the first time. How you doing, Mr. Butterball? Y'all have any He said, boy, make yourself useful. Go get me some food. I said, yes, sir. See, many times when you want more, you've got to be willing to pay your dues. So I became their errand boy. I went would get their lunch and their, their dinner and all kind of food for them. After a while, I would take the food to them in the control room and I would not leave until they would ask me to. And I'd watch them working the controls and I'd memorize their hand movements. And pretty soon they would trust me with their cars to go pick up entertainers that came into town. Entertainers like Sam Cooke, um, Dinah Ross and the Supremes, the Four Tops and the Temptations. I would drive them all over Miami Beach in the disc jockey's cars. Finally, one day I was at the radio station and a guy by the name of Rock was drinking while he was on the air. It was a Saturday afternoon. I was the only one there. None of the other jocks were available. And I was looking at him through the control room window. Pretty soon the phone rang, it was the general manager. I said, hello? He said, Les, this is Mr. Klein. I said, I know. He said, Rock can't finish his program. I said, I know. He said, would you call one of the other DJs to come in? I said, yes, sir. I hung the phone up. I said, now he must be think I'm crazy. I called my mom and my girlfriend, Cassandra. I said, y'all come out on the front porch and turn up the radio. I'm about to come on the air. <laughs> I waited for about 20 minutes, and I called him back. I said, Mr. Klein, I can't find nobody. He said, young boy, do you know how to segue the records? I said, yes, sir. He said, go in there and don't say nothing here. 
I said, yes, sir. I couldn't wait to get behind those controls. I put the headphones on. I said, look out. This is me, LB, Triple P. Les Brown, your platter playing papa. There were none before me, and there will be none after me. Therefore, that makes me the one and only. Young and single and love to mingle, certified, bona fide, indubitably qualified to bring you satisfaction, whole lot of action. Look out, baby. I'm your love man. I was hungry. <laughs> it makes you feel better when you are able to have charge of your destiny, doesn't it? Gives you a good feel. You can give you gives you choices. You can do more things. Living a dream, changing your life, it's hard. It's hard when you lose all your money, when you, you, you've given it the best that you have, when you have some major setback, it's hard. When a doctor looked at me and said the three horrible words no one wants to hear, you have cancer. It was hard to mobilize my mind and spirit, to listen to tapes and music and read scripture and be around other people and seeking out other prostate cancer conquerors to believe that I could do this. It was hard. Never forget my son said, Daddy, are you going to die? Why are you asking me that? You're not going out much. You're not the bubbly personality that I know you to be. You're not talking much. You're spending a lot of time in the room by yourself, Dad. Are you gonna surrender? Are you giving up? Are you gonna let that, that doctor's opinion become your reality? Will my daddy see me graduate? Yes, yes, son, yes, yes. I'm gonna fight. No, no, I, I don't think it's my time yet. I'm going to see you graduate, but more than that, I've got some other things that I'm going to do with my life. And I thank you for asking me that. Um, but I must tell you that I'm scared. I'm scared. And um, I've never been in this situation before. It's, it's been easy for me to talk to people and encourage people when they've had challenges in their lives. Um, but it's me. And I don't feel less than a man in, 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 in admitting this to you. Yes, I'm scared. And I need some help. See, life is hard, and, and there are some moments in life when you're going to need some help. You're going to need somebody to speak to you. You're going to need somebody to say something to you. I have a friend of mine, Willie Jolly, who's a motivational speaker. He said, a setback is a setup for a comeback. I had to listen to Willie's tapes. I have another friend, Kevin Brace, who's a, who's a speaker. He said, Les, come on, man, you can do this. You can make this happen. You can hit a home run. It's a done deal. You are Les Brown. That cancer's got to get out of your body. I said, talk to me, Kevin, talk to me. That's what I need to hear. I needed to hear those words. I don't care who you are. Many people won't allow themselves to ask for help because of, of pride. Pride cometh before fall. Because of ego. Ego means edging God out. No, ask for help. Not because you're weak, but because you want to remain strong. And ask for help and don't stop until you get it. I'm here because a lot of people helped me. I'm here because a lot of people believed in me at a time when I was struggling to believe in myself. The other thing is, let us say together, it's worth it. Yeah, see, I think, and write this down, you got to find five reasons that will make it worth it for you. Five reasons. What will make it worth it for you? Mine was, I want to take care of my mother. Mine was, I want to do something with my life. What will make it worth it for you? Mine is, I want to leave a legacy. Mine is, I refuse to die an unlived life. What will make it worth it for you? Repeat after me, please. you got to be hungry. As you look at your goals and look at your dreams, write this down. You will fail your way to success. See, 85% of people allow their fear of failure to outweigh their desire to succeed. You're going to make some mistakes, and it's okay. Anything that's worth doing is worth doing badly. It's worth doing right if you know how to do it, but if you don't know how to do it, it's worth doing badly until you get it right. You have to be willing to experiment with life. I've done a variety of things and I had absolutely no idea I had the ability to do those things. Here's what I can say about you and I don't even know you. You've got greatness within you, but you will not discover your greatness in your comfort zone. You've got to be willing to get outside of your comfort zone because in order to do something you've never done, you've got to become someone you've never been. And most people, they go to their graves with their greatness still in them. Maybe that's why one woman said in a moment of anguish, what if you live your whole life only to discover that it was wrong? Here's something else as you think about your goals and dreams. What's your why? Why do you want to do it? What drives you?
Elite Ocean View Realty, the best realtors of Miami.